Today we're going to be taking a look at the Anchor Solix C800 Plus portable power station and performing a few different tests to see how well it holds up to the manufacturer's stated specs and also running a charging test with their 200 watt 531 solar panel and I'll leave you with my final thoughts to show you how it stacks up to some of the other power stations and panels that I've tested in the past but overall Anchor delivered a very impressive and competitively priced power station with some pretty unique features that could make your next power outage or camping trip much more enjoyable and if you want to jump to a particular section of the video Video, you can reference the timestamps but before we get started be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're new here and if you want to pick up the power station and support my channel at the same time you can use the links down in the description below all right so this is the Solix C800 plus and this is a lithium iron phosphate based power station and it's rated for about 3500 charge cycles with a 768 watt hour capacity it has an ultra clear display and this is going to give you the remaining battery life as a percentage the input and output speeds in watts an estimation of the remaining runtime as well as basic Basic indicators letting you know whether or not the USB ports in the outlets are live. We've got our USB output section which includes two USB-C ports, one of which is a PD100 port which is going to give you lightning fast device charging speeds, and two USB-A ports with IQ technology. So there is a very good quantity of ports here. This button up here will turn on and off the light bar and it's got a nice warm color temperature with three different brightness levels and in general warm lights are easier on the eyes and more comfortable to use for longer periods of time. Down at the bottom we've got an array of five different 100 110 volt AC outlets which is a lot more than you're likely to see on most power stations this size and it's rated for a continuous 1200 watts which is also really impressive for a small power station like this one and we'll be testing out the continuous output a little later in the video and finally to the left of the display we've got a car style output port and a button to turn it on and off. Here we've got the AC input and also an XT60 input to connect a solar charger which should also accept a maximum of 300 watts. On top of the device, we've actually got something very unique here that I was definitely not expecting. And if you push this button here, you'll open up a little secret compartment and inside you'll find these two lanterns and a telescoping pole, which you can use to mount a lantern. The lanterns themselves actually have a few different power modes and they double as a flashlight too. And you can variably adjust the brightness, which is a nice touch. Setting up the telescopic lighting pole is a breeze. And with this, you'll be able to have a better lighting experience when no place to hang a lantern is easily accessible. Having some built-in lighting capabilities beyond the basic light bar on the front really does go a long way in making this setup much more versatile and capable for both camping trips and home emergencies and Anchor did a great job with this integration. Now let's jump into some testing to see if the C800 Plus holds up to some of the most important tasks and first we'll see if it can continuously run at the 1200 watt max output it claims. So to test this we're going to jump right in with this hot air gun and once we've plugged it in and turned it on at its highest setting, we're actually able to comfortably run at over 1400 watts for about a minute before it dropped down to just shy of the 1200 watt mark. And then it continued to power the hot air gun with no issues. Next, we're gonna test the true watt hour capacity of this power station and see how close it comes to the 768 watt hour stated. And this will give you an indication of how long you'll be able to run your devices when you look up their watts. So in order to test this, we've got this wall outlet style power meter, which will display the kilowatt hours and we'll be running this hot air gun on low, which is running about 830 watts, which will cause the internal fan to come on. So it'll be a good test of how efficient this device really is and we're going to take a few minutes to discharge the battery and at the end it's going to give us a measurement of the total watt hours and now the power station does appear to be completely dead and none of the ports are working and the meter is showing 618 watt hours which is about 80% of the stated capacity, which is excellent. And it's definitely one of the better ones that I've tested, which brings the cost per usable watt hour to around $1.05. Now that we've drained the battery, we're gonna plug in the power station to the wall outlet and see how long it takes to charge. And the charging cable itself is very compact and there's just a wire that plugs into the side. And as soon as we plug it in, we can see that the charging speeds start to climb up. And you can see on the display that the charging speed is reasonably quick at just over 720 watts at this moment. And I plugged it in at 3.06 PM and it was fully charged charged by 4.27 p.m. So the total charge time that I got was about one hour and 21 minutes, which is quite quick, but to get those charging times under an hour, you'll have to use the Anchor app. Another test I like to run on my power station is a fridge runtime test, and this might be important for you if you're worried about your food spoiling during a power outage. And this test is pretty straightforward, and what we're gonna do is plug in the fridge into the power station and see how long it can run for. I plugged it in at about 8.07 a.m., and we did use it normally throughout the day, and I was able to keep the fridge running for about eight hours and 17 minutes, which is pretty good for a power station this size. The final test we're gonna do is see if this device has a UPS mode, and whether or not it can be used as a backup battery for electronics, and right now the power station is plugged into the extension 
cord and we've got a surge protector plugged into the power station with a bunch of different stuff plugged in including my desktop pc and a monitor and now we're going to unplug the charging cable from the power station and as you can see it was able to transition seamlessly from charging to battery powered output exclusively without any disruption to the devices plugged in so it does work reasonably well as a backup battery for basic electronics now we're going to check out anchor solix 200 watt 531 solar panel and see what kind of speeds we can get charging up the c800 plus this is a briefcase style panel and it's a top of the line panel with etfe lamination and an ip67 rating so it's relatively weather resistant and there's an xt60 input on the handle which also connects via xt60 to the power station there's three different angles you can adjust the panel to including 40 50 and 60 degrees so it's highly adjustable and it does weigh in at just over 20 pounds and the setup was pretty straightforward and once i got everything connected and plugged into the power station I was able to get a charging speed of around 173 watts, which is approximately 87% of what was claimed, which is exceptional. But this does bring the cost per test watt to around $2.88 based on a $500 price tag for the panel alone. And this is somewhat high for a panel this size, but the trade-off is that you do get a very high quality and durable panel at that price point. We'll wrap things up with my final thoughts on the Anchor Solix C800 Plus, which normally sells for about $6.49, but there is an early bird discount going on at the time of making this video which will save you $150, which drops the price down to $499. I've been building this database of power stations. I've tested on the channel to help better compare and put each power station's strengths and weaknesses into perspective to hopefully give you a better sense of the true value that they offer. Based on the data I've collected from tests like the one you saw earlier in this video, for the sake of making the comparison more fair, we'll filter the database to include power station in the $500 to $800 range. This power station did the best in claim versus tested capacity at 80%, which is quite good. The main downside here would be that the cost per watt hour is on the higher side at $1.05, but you are paying for a state-of-the-art power station with some additional features and capabilities that the other power stations just don't offer. Now let's check out how the 200 watt panel stacked up to the other 200 watt panels that I've tested on this channel. And I was very impressed to see that this panel actually produced more watts than any of the 200 watt panels that I've tested so far. So it is the best from that perspective. The build quality is also exceptional and definitely a lot nicer compared to the other panels as well, but there is a steep price tag and limited out of the box compatibility with this panel but if you like anchors products this is definitely not a bad way to go i'd love to hear your thoughts on this power station and solar panel down in the comments and if you have any interest in learning more and supporting the channel please consider using the links down in the description below and i'll also leave a link to the power station and solar panel databases there as well